welcome everyone to the From the Shadows podcast. I am your host, Shane Grove. Before we get started with this uh, this new episode, I just want to remind everyone, if you want to follow us on all our social media, the easiest thing to do is to go to the From the Shadows podcast.com. All of our links to our Instagram, our TikTok, our Facebook pages, I think both our uh, From the Shadows podcast and After the Shadows forum page are all on there. If you want to follow me and uh, keep up with all the nonsense that I'm doing, you can find me at Instagram on Shane Grove, at Shane Grove Author. Um, and through the website, you can actually um, hit the contact button and send me an email Tell me about an experience or tell me about, you know, how good or bad we did on the episode. Uh, please keep it to good. Uh, <laughs> and, and and just, and, you know, share share with us what you think. And if you have an encounter that you want to come on and, and share with uh, our fans and listeners, we'd love to uh, love to talk to you. So feel free to reach out and uh, we want to hear from you. So with that being said. Um, I think everybody who's longtime listeners know, you know, we're based in Ohio and we really love Ohio stories. Not that we don't love stories from everywhere else because we love them equally as well. Okay. Really? I really like the Ohio stories. I can't lie. So, which I'm really excited about today's guest because she has a couple experiences that take place really close to where I live and some places that I am at a lot. Um, plus, plus in the course of talking, we found out I, we have some more other ties that I didn't even realize, but that's because I'm old and have a terrible memory and uh, she will laugh about that. So, <laughs> so I want to introduce Paige. Paige, welcome to the From the Shadows podcast. Thanks for having me. No, it's 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 our pleasure, our pleasure for sure. And um, and like I said before, with this first story we're going to get into, the judge, uh, who you know, yes. and did not know about his story, was kind of integral in you being on the show with an with an, uh, an event that happened to you. So if you want to kind of Tell everybody where you're from and kind of walk. Oh, man, I don't want to steal Wes's line. Walk us into it. <laughs> Wes is going to be like, dude, come on, get your own stuff. But just, kind of, just kind of explain to us, like, where you're doing, what you were doing, and what happened. Okay. Yeah, I um, I actually knew Shane at the time that this happened, but I didn't know of his experience. Um, I was just telling my brother about the experience and he had heard it on your podcast. So he's like, I got to get you to talk to these guys because they're talking about the same thing that you saw. So it's kind of neat the way that all worked by word of mouth and things. And <clears throat> well, we're, my- all, we're all connected by basketball. So in uh, back in 2013, I guess. So I was coming home at night. It was about nine, 10. I was coming home um, from church and I was just driving. I live right by the Indian Mill. Like our driveway is parallel with the Indian Mills driveway. <clears throat> so I was coming on um, Road 121. It used to be a, a road that cut right across 23 um, from where the John Deere store is. Um, but now it's uh, there are too many accidents, so they blocked that off. But and, and we're. Able- it- and we're talking about Upper Sandusky, Ohio. Yeah. So for yeah. everybody listening, Upper Sandusky, Ohio is along Route 23, which runs from Columbus to Toledo, right? right? right. And the area you're talking about is, is it's a place called Indian Mill, and it's an old grist mill, right? That's yeah. It's kind of got like a, it's like a picnic area. And, yeah. and, and kids, yeah. uh, all the fourth graders come and you know, have field trips there around the county and, um, yeah, has a lot of, of, um, heritage and things going on there, but yeah, it's a beautiful scenic spot and we go there, we walk there all the time, the grandkids and stuff, but yeah, we have, we have a beautiful area that we live in, but we were, 
I was driving home. I was by myself. I was in, this is kind of, this kind of important. I was in a Honda Pilot, which sits high. It was like, it's an SUV. <clears throat> and I'm coming up on 121 and there's like a triangle of roads where 121 and 50 meet. And then they kind of go into 47 and then come down that hill uh, that goes across the covered, that used to be a covered bridge of uh, Indian Mill. Well, <clears throat> I came up to 20, to 50, where 50 and 121 intersects, and 50 does not have a stop sign, but 121 does. So I'm coming up, and I see what I think. Oh, it's a deer. I saw, the, like, the deer head. Um, and I looked to my left to make sure no cars were coming there on 50, and there were. And as I'm going back my, with my eyesight, I see it again. And I pull off out of the stop sign and my brain starts thinking and I'm like, that does not have those spindly deer legs. Um, that can't be a deer. So my processing starts going by through my head and I'm like, uh, it had more, you know, thicker legs and it was, it must've been a dog. Maybe it was a dog. You know, I'm just, my brain is trying to process that stuff. Because <clears throat> I think, well, it can't be a bear. We don't have bear around here. And it must be a dog. And that, But then as I'm going along still, I'm thinking, no, because I have a German Shepherd at home. And it's a big German Shepherd. And he is, his, like, eyes come up to, uh, where I can see him at the bottom of my window, his eyes, and I can see his ears. But this thing was at the top of my window. Um, and so it would have to have been a dog that was. Five feet. Happy. <laughs> like, f like standing on its four legs, five feet up in yes. the air, basically. Because, yes. because I think we established when we talked yesterday that German Shepherd would be about three feet, yeah, and that would come up to the top of your door, and it's probably at least eighteen in like a window is probably eighteen inches, probably. Right. So, and so. and that and my dog had always, as I'm driving up into my garage, the, the dog always, of course, runs right by your car because he's excited to see you. So I, I remember exactly where the German Shepherd always hit. And this thing was to the top of the window. So in my head, I'm like, well, it couldn't have been a dog. It must have been a deer. But it, <laughs> it couldn't have been a dog unless it was a dog with like a, a deer face. And so all the way, all the way home then, which it wasn't too much farther, I was like, what was that that I saw? Well, now I'm like, I'm not going back there. <laughs> so I just kept driving. I did glance in my rear view uh, window um, as I was going. I was a little farther, but I didn't see it anymore. I went down across the bridge and into my house. I told my husband at the time, I think I saw a werewolf. I'm like, I don't know what other thing to explain it, but it was a huge dog type thing that had a snout. But the snout looked like a deer type of, or like almost like a whippet or a, a deer that narrow. But I said it wasn't a deer because the legs weren't those thin deer legs. They were thicker, um, like a dog's, like a bigger dog's legs. Um, and so he's just laughing at me, you know. And the next day I go to work, I'm still talking about this. So my coworkers are sending me pictures of Newfoundlands. I think I told you they were had Newfoundlands and they had um, uh, St. Bernard's. They were showing me all these kinds. And I'm like, well, you know, they'd send me pictures of like giant Newfoundlands and they had like little kids standing by their legs. I'm like, I guess it could have been that, except for that face is all wrong because a Newfoundland face uh, is just like almost like a bear kind of like flatter face, bigger fat flatter face. Yeah, like a Saint, like a Newfoundland looks like a Saint Bernard in the yeah. face to me. Always yeah. did to me. Yeah. Yes. So I just went ahead. I'm like, well, I guess it could have been. I don't know, but I, I, but in my head, I'm like, I know that's not what I saw. Um, I ended up actually, you know, uh, putting on Facebook. Hey, I saw a weird thing, <laughs> uh, and I told him the road it was. I said, "Does anybody have a dog or something that looks familiar? You know, looks similar to what I saw?" Um, there were a few things that said, a uh, few people that said, "Well, it could have been this or it could have been that," um, but everything anybody said, I was like, "No, I know it wasn't that. No, I know it wasn't that. You know, if it's a if it was a greyhound or a whippet, it would it it wasn't big enough." It wasn't tall enough and it wasn't bulk. It was too bulky to be that. 
Um, and the other dogs that they thought it was that they were bulky enough and maybe big enough, but didn't have that face. So um, then in the spring, then I'm still when the weather is a little nicer, we'll go on walks. And I was always looking at people's dogs, <laughs> just like around there, like, hmm, but never saw anything like it. But I just, and I still refer to it as when I saw the werewolf. <laughs> Um, but, uh, so it was kind of neat when I was talking to my brother about that, he says, well, wait a minute. It had like a, did it have like a, like a sphinx like type of face, like a, that, that God and, uh, I forget what the God's name is. Anubis, the God, the Egyptian God Anubis. Yeah. Yes. The Egyptian God of Anubis. And so we got online and saw it, uh, uh, Googled it and I'm like, well, yeah, I kind of look like that. And that's when he said, you've got to hear this podcast because somebody that you know saw something similar to that. And I guess, I mean, we're only like 20 minutes yeah. apart here in Viserys. So so that's when that's when I texted you. But I had the similar, similar. It wasn't as, I was in my car, so I had a level of protection. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I think, oh, I'm, I'm seeing things. I've got to try to figure out what it is, um, but nothing fit what anybody was helping me with. And so well, I well, well, I thought okay. So when we talked about we talked about this last night. The thing that really stood out to me was that is that you know you know this area because you and it's like everybody that lives out in the country that grew up in the country, you know all your neighbors. Yep. You know, especially if you're out walking or bike riding, you know who's got dogs, okay? You you just know it. And everybody, yeah, those farms, they do have big dogs, but you would know who has right. a dog like that. And especially if you put that up on Facebook, somebody's going to know if somebody's got a dog that fits that description. And it's obvious the, that nothing they threw at you fit that description and the fact that you were still like <laughs> like what the heck was this because you you grew up in the rural in a rural part of the country you yeah. know you know what a deer looks like you know what a dog looks like and it wasn't like it's not like every it doesn't sound to me like every night you come home you're questioning what you saw you no, know the, no. And we have, we do have quite a few deers. We're back here by the, uh, the Sandusky river, our deer. And, um, and so that's what I immediately thought it was, but, but then I'm like, wait a minute, no deer is that big. And, and they have those thin legs and not the like big solid legs. So originally I thought it was a deer just because of the face and the height, but. So, so and, and I don't know. So how close do you think you were to it as you passed it and got a good look at it? Um, probably 15 feet, maybe. That's pretty close. Yeah, because it's our, my road came up to the stop sign. Uh, that road was meeting like our that the two roads join and he was right he, uh, under a tree by by a field. It was a cornfield. Um, and he's just standing there, um, but he was on all fours. Somebody asked me if he was standing up or not, but no, he was on all fours um, at the time. But yeah, it was it was enough where I'm like, oh, there's a deer. And then I look back and I came, came across again and saw more of the shape of him and pulled out. And then my brain starts thinking, wait a minute that wasn't a deer. <laughs> so that's when it was, but yeah, it was, it was probably, you know, you, you think about, you know, seven feet more of the, my road and then, you know, maybe eight or nine feet of the other road. And he was right, right there. That's pretty close. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, and when you, when you saw the body and like the legs, was it the hair on it, like shaggy or was it shorter hair? Like it could have been a deer if it hadn't been so big? Um, I, I can't honestly remember what the fur looked like, except because it was, there was a, 
there was a light from my my headlights as I went by it and I saw the head. Um, and then when I turned back, I saw the body of it, but I don't remember if it was shaggy or shaggy or, you know, that deer skin. I don't remember about that. The head looked like, the head looked like a deer type of smoother skin. So I assume that the rest of it would be the same, but the rest of it was more shadowed than the head. Any a tree and so the head was kind of out a little bit and then the the maybe the front leg was out a little bit and the rest of it was kind of in the shadow in the shadow <laughs> there you go that's why that's where we stay so we can <laughs> and and i'm gonna and i'm gonna and knowing your next the next couple stories we're gonna kind of tell i'm gonna i this i want to ask this question did you get any type of bad feeling from seeing this thing like um like something inside like ooh, i shouldn't be seeing this or this is a this is bad i gotta get out of here or was it just like oh, i don't know what that is and it was more of a wonderment kind of feeling it was more of a, it was more of a wonderment like I, when i pulled up when i pulled up and i saw it it, I, it kind of turned its head towards me like it was like oh you know, almost like a deer in a headlight kind of look, um, but not, it didn't look menacing to me at all. Um, but then when I started trying to, wait, that can't be, then I got a little nervous myself. Like, what was that thing I just saw? So I spooked myself out, but the, the actual thing that I saw did not seem menacing when I was glancing at it and it looked at me. But I, I, I just want because I, because when, a lot of people, and I don't know, because I don't hear a lot of dogman sightings from cars. A lot of dogman sightings are really up close and personal with people, um, you know, out walking around or, you know, whatever. And they all, I mean, they most always say that they just get this feeling of pure evil. Like they're, like it's foreboding something bad. Yeah. It's like they shouldn't be there with their obviously what they're seeing shouldn't be there. Uh, so that's why, that's kind of why I ask. Um, well, I might've felt like that if I were outside of the car, but <laughs> since I had the car around me, I was like way better. Well, at least you had the common good sense to not stop, roll down your window and, <laughs> and try to get close to them. Now, now the one thing in, um, so people that are listening and I'm going to put up, is, is it okay? The map that you shared with me, yeah. we'll put that up. Uh, on our social media when this comes out so people can kind of look and see. Um, but the but we kind of got to talking and when you listen to the episode that the judge did on our show, we had we had just begun exploring this subject and finding things out about um, some of the research that was done on on the dog man. So what people this area that you guys live that you guys live in as is a lot of this part of ohio was was had a lot of native american settlements and a, and a, there's a lot of native american burial grounds whether they're well publicized or whether they're just known and kind of kept um under wraps by the farmers or whoever's fields they may be in and I kind of, I threw that out to you when I kind of told you that's what we found out when we interviewed Linda Gottfried on our show. And, and then the judge started doing me more research about the area of his sightings and found a couple Indian burial mounds with, and Linda's thought was that these were creatures and she was, she was. I told you, I said, we get a lot of crap if we call somebody an expert. But if she was sitting here in the room with us, she's the expert on this subject compared to me and you yes. and everybody else. And through a lot of her research, through her later research, she was starting to lean towards Dogman being a um, an entity that Native Americans, I don't, I don't know how to say this, used or believed in that we're going to protect their dead. Sort of like 
the Egyptian god Anubis, which, um, you know, I think, I think there's this distinct possibility that Native American or some Native American culture could have been Egyptian. You know, I mean, there's no, you can't tell me that Egyptians couldn't have, you know, with the Phoenicians and the Vikings and whoever, you know, they, they couldn't right. have, some people couldn't have ended up over here that had beliefs. And, and where did the Egyptians get their beliefs from when it came to that? It all, it all stems from, uh, you know, from a source that many different cultures could have taken it from. Right. And so I just found it interesting that the area that you had the sighting that you live in, there's lots of Native American activity through oh, the yeah. years. I mean, well, lots Wyandotte of County, Wyandotte County is the last Indian yeah. right? you know, Indian villages and that would that were. Be, yeah. 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 So so I wonder and, and her belief was, is that, you know, uh, much like a um, spirit, like when we have a ghost sighting, you can experience ghosts in different ways. Some of them are way more physical than others, whether it's like seeing the ghost on something or, you know, make a noise or push something over, which is a physical manifestation. Okay. And some people just hear like a voice, you know, so there's no saying that this dog man creature, we can't, a lot of us, a lot of people that have sightings aren't experiencing it in a physical form, but it's really a spiritual entity yeah you know? um, and that's and i'm and maybe well, some people just feel the sense of foreboding or i shouldn't be here and don't really see anything else but they just get the feeling like mm, i think i'm going to keep on moving uh you know exactly exactly and i mean and of course none of us know i mean we don't know this this is all just you know speculation through um all the research that has been done and he talking to people that have these sightings and kind of putting it to putting it together. And that's, you know, that's, that was, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to know like what you feel when you, when you saw that, but like you said, you probably would have felt a little bit differently if you'd have been out walking with your grandkid down the road instead, instead of in the car, <laughs> in the car. So, so, um, so I mean, did you, did anybody, has anybody come forward with any kind of an experience similar to what you had and said, Hey, by the way, you know, nope. nobody has until my brother told me about Shane. And so I was so excited to listen to the podcast. Cause I thought I was the only person <laughs> who'd ever had a, and I, I always used the werewolf. So. <laughs> and well, my, it, all my coworkers laugh and say, "Oh, Paige saw the werewolf that one time." <laughs> well, it's so interesting though that that's what you went to. Okay, you didn't go to like I saw this gigantic deer, or I saw this you know rabid uh, Doberman pincher, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I mean, right. things that would make <laughs> logical sense. You're like, I saw a werewolf. I like, know. <laughs> so when that's the box that you can put it that you. That's the only box you know to put it in. Yeah. That's that's very interesting, especially when you don't. It doesn't seem like you really had a bunch of knowledge about dog no, man. It's not like I, I never even I never believe in werewolves either. But I, that's the only the 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 mouth coming out looked like a you know something that was had sharp teeth you know those kind of animals and then it was so big I'm like, like I'm just gonna call it a werewolf I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> that's what I well, I, well, I hope. Because we do have a lot of listeners in Ohio and a lot of, I hope that if there's people from the area over there, from the upper Sandusky area that have had similar experiences, whether it's even a sighting like yours, I hope that they'll come forward yeah, and tell that, us and tell us. That would be neat. You know how, no matter how silly they feel or whatever insignificant, I mean, they think the sighting is. It's a, it's important. I mean, I think it's important, and I and I do think it, it really lends credence to the fact that you were still searching for an answer, and you made that effort. Like, I'm going to see if I see this, see this stuff, <laughs> because the chances, like, I know the area, and the chances of 
somebody five miles away having that a dog like that or something you know, that would match us being there there or yeah. slim to done. that's not how you know we're not the <laughs> wild west out here that's not how it operates <laughs> so so I, I i love i love that story i love that um i love that the dog man brought us all dog <laughs> man or werewolf brought us all together but uh I, I so i want you to share then um your other couple stories that you told me because they're equal they are equally you know if not even worse as far as like the creepiness factor yeah for sure yeah and i think i think you know i'm 54 years old now i just turned had a birthday last week but i think to myself <clears throat> I just had these three things that happened. But when you go to tell other people, they're like, what, what, what? So I guess I've had more than my share. But um, the one was clear back in, um, oh gosh, it was like 1989. Because I was like just out of high school. Back and, back when we were in high school in our glory days. <laughs> I just, just put that out there. Yeah. So I had just started college and um, this was a friend of mine and um, we weren't like bosom, like we weren't best friends, but we like were on the same um, to one of the same teams at school and we, we had classes together and we joked around and had fun. Um, but we saw each other um, when we came back from a, uh, you know, just a break from college. And <laughs> she said, Hey, do you want to go to the Cadillac club? And the Cadillac Club was a place down in Marion that teenagers that were under 21 could go and they could dance. Um, and it was it was a lot of fun. Mad Bull was in Besiris. We always took turns. We went to Mad Bull one week, Cadillac Club the next. So I, and there, and, and listeners, there's no truth to the rumor that Paige and I may or may not have slow danced at the Mad Bull on Teen That's Night. I, <laughs> that has not been not substantiated true. at all. We, he did, we did say that we both were probably there, but yes, we know. absolutely were probably both there at the same time. That was the place to go. We didn't have any other fun, really active. We didn't have our phones that we carried all around with us and talk to people that go out. You know what? You, you know what, though? And this is totally, you know, this is totally off the topic, but I think our, but, but those days were a lot simpler and a lot more, it just, you just felt a lot more safe going to places like that and there was people from everywhere that came and everybody put their beef aside school wise and we, you just kind of had fun you know there was you know and so i do miss not that i want to be a teenager again and go to teen night but i do miss <laughs> the fact that like my kids never got to experience some of that stuff that we got to experience right. yeah like that. you know like that like you like you said no phones no like right had to like, go somewhere yeah. else fun to do stuff with your friends because you couldn't communicate with them otherwise you know all not all at once you could call somebody on the phone but okay. definitely not at my house if it was long distance <laughs> <laughs> my parents <laughs> now that being said now we're talking about how great this was everybody wait till you hear about how great her friend was that night go ahead <laughs> Okay, so so I met at her house, and she wasn't done with getting ready. So I went up the stairs to her bedroom, and um, she had like a, um, it, it, it's like a you know a desk with a mirror on it, uh, where she was putting on her makeup and fixing her hair or whatever. And she had a stack of records um, to the right of on that desk, and there were probably like I don't know eighteen records on there. And I was sitting on her bed, which was just to the right of her and the records. And we were just talking and um, get catching up and the, some records of like top four or five just fell off the top of the, the stack of records. And we we're still talking, nothing happened. I just leaned down and I picked them up and I put them back on this, put them back up on the stack of the records. And <clears throat> so we're talking a little bit more and pretty soon a few of the records at the top fall off again. And I'm thinking to myself, well, they must not be situated on there right there must be something funky with that so i put them on the top and then i'm like uh like 
you know, making them all level and, and getting them all. And we're still talking. We haven't said anything about the records. It's just like when something drops and you're just pick it up. <clears throat> and so we're talking a little bit more. And then the whole stack of 18 records shoots off of that dresser that she was getting ready at and just shoots across the whole floor. And like when, as they fan out, they're across the floor and my eyes are wide and she's still doing her stuff. I'm like, did you see that? What is, what is going on? And she said, oh, my spirit, my spirits don't like your spirits. They can't get through to you. Your spirits are too strong. And I'm just like, of course, big eyes, like, what is she talking about? And, and I said, what are you talking about? And she said, my spirits, we all have spirits. Your spirits are strong. Well, I, I am a Christian, so I don't know if her spirits were, were negative and my spirits were more of God. But she said then, she says, I have learned all about this. And she says, I have these spirits that hang out with me. But, but she said she was taking a witchcraft class at college which i'm like they do not have witchcraft classes at college and she says no they really do it's an elective and i took it and i'm just sitting there aghast and she lifts up she goes over and lifts up her carpet that's on her bedroom floor and there's a hexagon thing um pentagram that's what it is pentagram pentagram thing and I knew enough to know what that was and I thought oh my gosh um my personality is I don't like to make waves but I wanted to just run away but I just internalized it and I went ahead and we went down to the Cadillac club and we went in my car got all the way down there um had a good time she met somebody and uh she uh, wanted to go off then further into the night with, with the guy that she met at the Cadillac Club. I said, not a big deal because I drove separately. So I went home. And as I'm going home, I just I will not look in my rearview mirror. I know that there is something sitting in my back seat. I prayed the whole way home. Just, you know, just I'm so sorry. Just get whatever it is out of here. Um, I pulled into my garage and I just shut the door and came went running into the house it really it really did a, a number on me but the next day when i went out to my car i didn't feel it again but that was a very strange night with those records just shooting across the floor like there's uh, nothing that could have made them go like that across the room in a fan shape you know the way that the distance of that so that was weird wow that's all <laughs> i could i mean in <laughs> So did you feel compelled to warn the guy that was going to leave with her? That, no, no. And did she, the, she ended up marrying that guy. Oh, eventually. God. I saw, well, yeah. she, all I can think of is she put a spell on him. Was that a CCR <laughs> song? I put yes. a spell on him. Or could is that his? Could have been. Um, he was so nonchalant. Matter of fact, like, yeah, I live with these things all the time. And blah, blah, blah. I was just like, what? How can, how can you just take that so like nonchalantly <laughs> well what's even crazy so so why did it why did whatever you feel glee go with you in the car i like, don't know like did she say hey look i'm going with this dude i'm not gonna have you ruin it ride back with Paige." you know i mean like it's going through my or did it be like know, i'm gonna, or, I'm I gonna take one more shot at her you know <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if it was like challenge because whatever I have surrounding me, my guardian angels or whatever, uh, it's like, no, I'm going to try again. I don't know, but I was protected because I felt uh, I didn't feel it anymore after that, after that time coming home in the car. But well, and what and, and what struck me as you were retelling this and, sa and saying that I'm like, you know, and I ask about your feeling when you saw with the werewolf. Like, and you didn't have that, feel, like, maybe these spirits are still with you. And they're like, oh, no, Thought, you know, like, they kept you from. Oh, that's a good, that's a good concept. I mean, yeah. I mean, that that's, that's kind of what went through my head. Like, you're talking about that. I'm like, well, wait. Like, I'm protected. Like, know? maybe you're protected. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and go skydiving. Right, or, right. or do anything crazy like that. Well, 
my husband says I'm a crazy driver, so I, I maybe I need two or three of those guardian angels all the time. <laughs> oh geez. Oh geez, maybe maybe everybody else does, right? So that's crazy. So that's crazy. And like what do you like what college did that lady go to that they offered witchcraft? I, I you know what? I don't even know what college she was going to. I was going at the time to marry an OSU, but I don't she wasn't going to mine. She went so I don't know. But she showed me that like there was like a syllabus. She showed me the syllabus. I just glanced at it, but I was like. Well, technically, it'd be called the succubus. And the, <laughs> if it was, it dealt with witchcraft. Holy <laughs> shit. I oh. feel like right now to see if any electives at any colleges in today's world have witchcraft. But I can't believe, I can't believe at that time they did. I know. <laughs> That's just crazy. I love, but I love that story because I do remember the Cadillac Club and, uh, I do. That's just, but, but the fact that, you know, they were trying, something was trying to get your attention, obviously, by yeah. just throwing some records. Or, and when you didn't say anything, you probably made them mad. <laughs> and like, that's, he's not yeah. picking up on our hints. <laughs> nope. Nope. That's crazy. Okay. So, so if that's not bad enough, you, you had something else happen, not to, right? Is this pretty recent? Yeah. This was back in 2020 before before COVID shut everything down. Um, it was it was my 40th birthday, and my husband took me to Landel's Mohican Castle. It's over in Mohican. By the way, it was your, it was your 50th birthday. I just oh yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry you about didn't that. let me buy with that one. <laughs> Sorry about that. It was. I, I knew it was a big one, but it was a 50. Uh, and uh, it, and we just went because of the castle, like the whole thing. He's like, oh, you're going to be a princess for the weekend. And and he, look, and I'm, I had never heard of it before. So we went there and we pulled in and it was in February. So there's snow all around. And uh, we went in and when we went in, they had all these um, ghost hunting um newspaper articles and uh signatures from like the ghost hunters and i we i asked the host lady i'm like wait have ghost hunters been here and she said yeah and she told us where to find it on youtube and everything and she says uh you can find it so of course we went to our room which was in the stables mm -hmm. they have the main castle which there are like eight rooms there and then they have a, about three or four other not castles really but cabins um and then they have a, the stables that host about oh i don't know maybe 15 16 rooms um and those are the newest things put up so she jokingly said um the stables are the newest things and so you don't get many sightings there <laughs> so we're like oh good um but we looked on my youtube and there's a number 13 which I can't remember the name of it, but uh, it's a cabin that's right out by the road. You wouldn't think that would be the haunted one. But on YouTube, that was the one that did a lot of crazy stuff. She said there's a cemetery right, which is right beside the parking lot. Um, and it's an old cemetery. <clears throat> and uh, when we walk down into there, there is a girl that died of like typhoid. And she was like eight or nine. And she's got a little one of the little caskets that is above ground. And, and like a mausoleum like a mausoleum type yeah but it's just the casket a just, tube, yeah. just on top okay. um put little toys and stuff on there <clears throat> and she was supposedly being the one that people cited a lot but there were others also and then there was a pool room that was in the spot of where the where an old church was which was beside the thing in the church every time they built a church up they said it burnt down so they build this church up, it would burn down. They build another one, it would burn down. So they didn't they didn't rebuild the church, <clears throat> but they have a pool there. Was that lady that you went to the Cadillac Club the pastor at that church or what? <laughs> I mean <laughs> I have not seen that lady in a while since that night. <laughs> <laughs> but but the pool had some issues too, they said. So we go back and we're watching the YouTube videos and things like that. And um I'm like, this is really cool, you know, not not expecting to anything to happen or anything. But <clears throat> that night we go to sleep 
And my husband goes to sleep really easily. He just turns on his belly and he goes out. And I'm laying there and and I close my eyes and I'm starting to go to sleep. And I'm, I'm about drifting off and the bed starts to shake. Um, at first I was thinking, because it was like a the shake, like when you used to put quarters in the, in the bedroom things and the, the bed would shake. We do that at when we were kids all the time. Oh, That's yeah. How it, yeah, yeah like that or like if a train was going by your house and it kind of would do that because we stayed in Chicago once and the train was right by our house and it did that so in my head again I'm always trying to oh we must be rationalize what's going cool. yeah, yeah. I'm like we must be near a train and then my brain thinks to myself no we're in the middle if if, if you knew where this place was it's in the middle of a wood like a woods um it's over at Mo for it's for it's in Mohegan State forest, right? Yeah, it's in the Mohegan Forest, and there wasn't a yeah. train anywhere nearby. Um, so in my head, I'm thinking, no, it's not a train. No, it's not. What? Oh, my gosh. Am I having an experience? That's what I'm thinking. I'm having an experience. Something is shaking this bed. But <laughs> my husband later said, why didn't you wake me up? And I said, because I did not want whatever was shaking the bed to know that I was awake. So I just did that. You know how you have the fright or flight mine was freeze <laughs> so i just froze and i just i just was like i'm just not gonna pretend i i don't feel it after probably about 30 seconds or so of the shaking of the bed which doesn't seem like long but when the bed is actually shaking it, it seems like forever <laughs> mm -hmm. uh it stopped and then everything was silent but then you know how when somebody is walking on carpet it's just kind of like like just, just real quiet. I heard something walking on carpet and then I didn't hear it anymore. It had stopped kind of close to me. And then as I was laying there on my back, <clears throat> frozen, I felt something right next to my head and it didn't touch me. I didn't feel breaths. It was just a feeling of something has either a bent over and they're right next to my face and if i open my eyes i'm going to see something or it was something that was just that height i don't know which i don't know if it was bent over or if it was that height but i knew something was there and i just started to breathe really deep <sighs> like i was just really in a deep sleep and i felt it there for a while and then i didn't so when i I didn't feel it there anymore. I still didn't open my eyes, but I at least turned and got right like snuggled up under my husband and, and grabbed his arm and put it around me and just like buried my head so that there was some like shield between me and whatever that was. But I still didn't open my eyes just in case it was still there. Uh, we just went back there because we had a gift card there to, for a free night's stay and I said you are sleeping on this side of the bed <laughs> You're doing this. <laughs> we're not staying in the same place and I didn't have any activity that night so that was good but that that was that was creepy I don't know if it was a girl or a woman or a man but that it was it's funny that you it's I mean so the stories about a girl haunting it that's exactly what a kid would do to get your attention, right? Come and shake the bed. Yeah. And then you said you, you know, that you didn't know whether it was bent over or just that height. That'd be a little kid's height I know. right there. Like, are you going to wake up or are you <laughs> just going to stay there and ignore me? You're like, oh. like, I, I gotta be honest. I thought you'd have learned your lesson the first time with the crazy lady. Pay attention before I'm something a else. I'm a chicken. <laughs> Holy smokes. I did not want to open my eyes. I, you, the first time you told me, you told me that story last night, I started feeling claustrophobic myself. Like, because that's the feeling as, is this per things getting right up next to you and closing it? Like, I just was like this, I'm feeling very uncomfortable and hearing this. If she, if she or he, I don't know. I all say she, but I don't know if it was a she or he. It's just like I say she. Um, but whatever it was, I was sweating to death because when it started, I had all these covers on me. 
And then I was scared now too. And I wanted to rip the covers off and because I was sweating death, but I was not budging. So here I am laying, trying to pretend to sleep, sweating. She's whoever it is has got to know that. <laughs> Why doesn't they this s- person take off the covers? <laughs> I don't know. And it's, you know, and I have, st- I've stayed there, but it's been so many years ago and um, I don't ever, I don't remember anything happening, but it is a, a very unique property. And I think, I mean, I think those staples were built because there was another fire. I yeah, think. They had fires that happened over and over yeah. again. And, and do you know what they have now? They have so many, they have seances there at the graveyard. <sighs> place where that has um um oh mediums and stuff that come in and uh sit and have groups there they have a uh platform with a curtain all around the four sides of the platform with a bed in the in that curtain platform area and a heater like a you know just like a heater that you would be outside uh in the winter but it keep and and people pay to stay overnight there by the graveyard <laughs> because there's so many, you know, sighting activities. That so they've really embraced this whole idea that they, the place is haunted. And and if I if my memory serves me correct, I think I think finding Bigfoot might have even, have even done an episode there where there was a, a a pretty good Bigfoot sighting just on that property or right next to it. I believe so. If oh. my memory serves me right. Well, that's funny because um, when we were camping there, uh, my dad and mom uh, have distant cousins that have property just six miles from that. And we call it the cow pasture, but my brother, Scott and Tessa and my parents, we always go there and take our families. Um, one night we were all sitting around the campfire and we heard this noise and we thought it was deer. You know how deer um, rub their antlers on the yeah. trees? Yeah. <clears throat> but it's almost sounded like there were two fighting or something, but there, it was a lot of noise and that rubbing. And we're like, Oh gosh. And, uh, and a tree, you know how, like when a tree limb breaks, it kind of crash, 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 and it falls down. It, the tree limb came out and like landed by our campfire. We're all like, all right, we're all going in bed. But we always laugh about that too. We always tease that Bigfoot was throwing a log out at us. But <laughs> So, so maybe I had another one. I don't even know. But Scott what? was there for that one. Scott, my brother, for that one that you know. <laughs> Scott is holding out that he he got a log a branch thrown at him, but because that is, I mean, that's a super hot spot for for Bigfoot. I mean, you're you're over there near um, Salt Fork and all that stuff is all within shouting distance of Mohegan and stuff. That's just that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. See, I didn't, was even expecting that last little. I was. I didn't even think of that at, until you said that about Bigfoot. Then I'm like, well, we laughed about having Bigfoot at our campsite that one night. <laughs> Reminded me. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, Paige. I'm so glad that Scott decided to turn you on to the judge's <laughs> story because I love I love that story. I mean, and um, I love the story number one because it wasn't terrifying for you. Right. Okay. Um, I mean, I've had some people. I was worried for the judge as I was listening to his story. (laughs) Well, and I've, and I've had, we've had other people on that. I mean, dog man sightings are no joke for most people and they're very, very frightening and they're disturbing. And, um, and if that is, you know, what you saw out there, at least your sighting was not that because I'm telling you, everybody that I've talked to that has had a more whew, visceral, you know, like a real, like face to face, and they're they're not the same. They're just not the same. And the judge is still not the same. And he barely, you know, saw what he saw from you know, as he as he's off. yeah as he's running away from it. And um, you know, but of course, the buildup was. I mean, look. I'm just gonna be honest. In his story, if he'd have known from the beginning of that mile what was in that cornfield running, it'd be it had been a whole different story. Even I, I don't think he would have. I think it would have been a different outcome. To be honest, I think he'd yeah. have a heart attack, even as a 16, 17 year old kid. Right. Um, so I'm glad that your story was not like that. Um, 
but I hope that you sharing it, some other people will come forward with some other sightings or experiences out there because there's a lot of stuff that goes on in Wyandotte County because there's a lot of history and there's a lot of cool stuff, but it's a very, um, for lack of a better term, it's a very conservative area where people, I think, especially the older people are like, I'm not, I'm not telling anybody I saw that because I don't want people to think I'm crazy, you right. know, right. but there's nothing. I mean, if you saw something, there's nothing crazy about yeah. sharing it, you know? And, uh, but I, no, I enjoy, I, I enjoyed, uh, yeah reconnecting so to speak with you and, and and hearing these stories i'm glad you came on and shared them with everybody i think everybody's gonna gonna really enjoy have really enjoyed them yeah maybe some other people come out and say hey you know i this is what i saw this is you know it'd be kind of interesting to see other people step out and, and share not be so intimidated by what other people are going to think i mean they laugh at me and when i say i saw my werewolf but <laughs> we're like i'm laughing with them you know I, well, like I said, I mean, it's such an unknown entity. Like we don't, nobody really knows what we're dealing with out there. And thankfully they don't, you know, those things don't seem to really, they just want to scare us more than anything else. And everybody, everybody's laughing until they experience, experience it their own way, you know? (laughs) So, but I, and I will add, if anybody's got any good Cadillac, uh, club stories from the 1980s and early 90s well, that might or be it. or mad bull stories that might be uh, a good episode for the midweek howl just saying yeah. so so page the a thank you so much and if anybody like i said if anybody out there has something similar and you know let it get on the from the shadows podcast.com send me a send me a message and i'd love to share it with page and uh make her feel a little bit better about what she saw that night. (laughs) Yeah. Well, thank you, Shane. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. (laughs) Ha 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 